Okay, so how many of you want to be famous? Oh, that's a lot of people. Wow. Don't you guys want to be famous? Of course you do. All right. Okay, now, you know, contrary to what other people think, the famous people do not kind of freak out. Uh, they're invincible and they can be open to scrutiny, right? So, how many have, how many of you have freaked out in the last 24 hours? Me too. 48 hours? Two weeks? So I can assume almost everybody, right? Including myself, for coming here. When I got to know that I was going to give a speech here, I was like shitting my pants. And yeah, and people expect just because I'm famous, I'm well known, I'm not allowed to have anxiety, but I do. I'm just like anyone else. I'm a human being, right? I have my own experiences, I have my own story, I have my own struggles. I'm not different than anyone. And I see, I, I hear a lot of people come up to me saying, I want to be famous like you. And I go like, why do you want to be famous like me? I'm not famous like anyone, I'm not famous. I hate the word famous and I hate the word fans. What I like the most is supporters, because you guys really support me. It, it is because of you guys that I'm standing here today in front of you. Thank you for having me. Now, thanks. Now, a person, I'm not going to brag, but a person with half a million, over half a million followers, I had to correct myself, over half a million followers is bound to get scrutiny from people almost over... 700,000 times a day. Now, there's no chart for that. My slide sucks. Yeah, I don't have any pictures. I don't have anything. All I have is my speech, the information that I really want to convey to all of you guys. Being famous, being well-known, seems very exciting, right? It's like a lot of cameras in front of you, a lot of people knowing, getting to know about you, your parents are proud of you. Well, nothing of such sort happened with me. It was entirely the opposite. Because I never planned on becoming someone well-known or famous. I never intended to become, be famous. Now, if I ask you, how many of you check their cell phone the first thing in the morning. <laughs> you do? <laughs> All right. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> All right. So I see a lot of people, you guys are quite young and you have iPhones. Like, how old are you guys? And what jobs do you have? Really? It's all right, I had my iPhone 4G when I was like 15 or 14, guys, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. Now, this little brick has the power to control all of us, right? It, it helps us shape our beliefs, how we think, how we perceive the world, what things that we have to believe in, how to say yes, how to say no, how to cancel other people, Always like, you know, life is a race. All these things, we have, we're, we're up and neck about, you know, like doing the right thing and, and going ahead of other people. We never care about our own thoughts. We never care about our own feelings. We give all those powers to our smartphones. Before we can start our brain in the morning, we let our social media dictate what are we going to do today. How are we going to feel today? Right? And before we can actually realize this power that we have given to this smartphone, our small device, it's oftentimes too late. And don't get me wrong, I'm not going to talk about how social media is bad for you. Ah, that's boring. I mean, come on, my whole career depends on social media. <laughs> And I cannot live without those online validation when people say, you're doing a great job. Without it, I'll, I'll probably not make another content in foreseeable future. Definitely not. I need social media. It fuels my blood. It fuels my 
potential i know what i want to become I, and because of you when you go online and when you write things positive things about me or anyone like me sadman sadik is over here we get the drive to become better but that's not where the story ends and it gets darker now i'll start with my story oh i forgot to press it <laughs> anyway i started my career through vine back in 2013 a lot of people may claim they are the first youtuber first content creator but i came first okay <laughs> because vine came before like year 2000 almost at the end of 2012 that's when i started and it wasn't even popular among our community and i was the only viner from bangladesh and i was quite popular and that's how i got discovered by my ex partner uh, with whom i formed a youtube platform called oh i'm not going to name it no 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 i'm not going to name it oh hell no i don't know what you're talking about and our first year together was like honeymoon period right but the second year was anything but honeymoon the because i was just a teenager i was like barely 16 years old and i not that i want to become famous i really wanted to make a name for myself and i i i had dreams i i knew back in back in the time when i was in school i i, I would not take no for an answer i would challenge my teachers i would uh, you know um, fight with my teachers argue with them i would i would get ex expelled from my schools I would ask the most brave questions that anyone can ask to teachers and I love to ask questions I love to throw challenges at people and I was that kid no one knows about it yet So I was that kid and what happened to me I that guy who I was creating contents with took my narrative away and how you might think I'm blaming him right now but it's actually the other way around he started micromanaging me and i lost my voice how i felt about certain things what i should be doing and i was like quite young right i was barely trying to pre preoccupy myself uh, from depression through my contents so I, my resources were used my talents were used yet i had no say in my contents and outside world had no idea about it only my family had ideas about it and they would constantly warn me to leave that person but to me he was the whole world like i said i was just a 16 years old teenager trying to be something we were getting recognized by uh, public prs interviews i felt invincible i was like man i'm popular i'll get laid and i'll get a lot of girls mm -mm. but i was depressed and i was near suicidal i wanted to kill myself every day and i didn't like what i was doing right and my partner back in the back in the day made things worse when i tried to open up to him about my mental health he disregarded everything and he said these are these are the things just you know going in your head those are not real you have bipolar issues you're just constantly changing your mood and changing your things and you're just going back and forth and trust me like i said a lot of the times a lot of people had girls and boyfriends back then and i had no one i was single and he was like my older brother and i was young so i still didn't blame him i blamed everything this um, experience on social media you know why because social media amplified everything that i was feeling inside and i'm sure it happens the same for you it's like a child's formative years are raised from their family and if that is not done right when you go to school when you go to universities or you out on your uh, out in the world you feel like things are not right for you you're not doing things right and people are not liking you for some reason and you're not being able to express your thoughts the right way it's the same thing that happened with me just because i could not pay attention to my mental health i blamed everything on social media whatever happened on social media uh, even one single comments or likes or even haha react i don't know if haha react was back then 
probably not but anyone and any anybody had anything to say about me i would take it personally and i would get so depressed i would feel so sad about it and i would blame social media for everything and i saw many tiktoks many youtube videos many facebook videos people would just rant about like how social media is bad for you but to tell you it's not because my career depends on it not only because of that because i am living in it every day and i took 4 years break from that experience I, and that was the best decision I, that i've ever taken because i was constantly on social media so i thought to probably because of social media i was feeling bad but i was constantly ignoring the fact my surrounding my partner my parents were not being supportive maybe because of that i was feeling depressed and i was feeling suicidal but everything reflected on to social media because i was always on social media right so it was easy for me to blame social media so what i did i did nothing i didn't get to talk to anybody and i was i was nearly self destructive to a point where i sh- shut myself from the world i decided to take a break i decided to go on hiatus for 4 years which i did i deleted all my socials and decided to just pay attention to my mental health my education perhaps my family and that was the best decision a decision that i've ever taken in my entire life and then i realized it's not social media that hampers us the most it's those things that we don't pay attention to it's those attempts that we don't take it's those help that we don't seek externally it's those things that make us feel worse about ourselves when we don't speak about them when we don't uh, become aware of them and we don't become compassionate to ourselves that's when things go worse and contrary to what other people was doing that blaming social media i realized i don't blame social media for any of those things because now fast forward after 6 years when i came back with bible uh, sorry oops with mr upsar see whatever is in my mind is just going to come right out and then i realized social media had no play in this even though i do believe there's a limit to whatever you use and you always have to make sure that you don't cross boundaries there's an online etiquette that you have to maintain apart from that if your surroundings are supportive of you if you seek the right help if you be aware of your uh, mental health nothing can penetrate you whatsoever now fast forward what you can take away from my story contrary to what i have written that let other people dictate my opinion definitely you should never let anyone snatch your narrative from your life right i can't go back can i i'm trying but it's not helping oh 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 what's happening i think god hates me okay then what i believe in i stopped believing in the things that i really believed in while growing up i stopped listening to myself and you should never allow yourself to dictate anyone steal your narratives and what you believe in away from your social media what you truly believe in a lot of other speakers have came forward and told you how to listen to your own thoughts right and a lot of other people have given you multiple of steps on how to uh, be self aware well i am going to say those are boring just allow yourself to be bored when you allow yourself to be bored away from social media away from this daily life you be more creative you be more self aware and that's how i became more self aware now it's not going next okay and now what i can and we both can take away from this story is like never to let anyone mansplain you right i know i'm not a female but still never let anyone ma- micromanage you if you want to be famous if you want to become anyone in your life you should always remember even if you make mistake it is your own mistake and you're never going to let anyone dictate that you're so much more than what others think of you 
forget about social media, forget about your parents for a while. You have your own mindset and you have your own soul. If I can do it, so can you. Just because we are all put on a pedestal doesn't mean that we are invincible. But we can be. How? How do you think we can be invincible? No idea? No idea at all? There is a proverb that goes in Bangla. I have nothing to do with you, right? There is a proverb that goes in Bangla. Well, nobody, you are only responsible for your own life. You feed yourself, so you become your own person. And that's how you become invincible because other people's opinion has nothing to do with you. They don't pay you, they don't earn for you, and definitely they don't pay your rents. You guys are young now, you, you barely understand the concept of rents, right? Or do you? Or anyone has an ap apartment and they're like living their best lives? You don't know, probably your parents does. All right. So learn about your mental health, be more self-aware, and then try to be try to try to help others, like your friends, the person that wants to share your things with you but cannot, just because you have created a wall around you, or perhaps it's vice versa. That's how you become invincible, and that's how what happened to my phones. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the most important thing is. Social media, we think social media is a real place. Well, it's not. Just like book, when we open it, we get sucked into the stories, into the characters, and we create this fantasy world. Social media is just like that. You create a version of you on social media, a curated version of you. And if you turn it off, you can, you know, just forget about it. Just like that, learn to get detached from social media. But again, I'm going to emphasize that social media is not bad for you. It's not. Now, how we can tackle, I'm not going to go through these points because these are really boring. I've already spoken about them. Now, do I still freak out? Definitely, but I don't get freaked out by other people. I don't get freaked out whether someone else is going to uh, steal my narrative or someone else is going to do whatever the other person did. Now, I, or even my social media comments. I have taken that break. I have overpowered the social media so I know how things should be done the right way. And do I still freak out? Definitely. But I only freak out if I kind of lower my standards. If I freak, and I freak out if I don't deliver what I'm supposed to. And I definitely freak out from the feedbacks that you're going to give me after this speech. Thank you so much.